crippling credit card debt, moving back in with your parents, and a tiny black hole. All of these things have one thing in common. My name is Hawkillies, and let's talk about Radiant Black and how Kyle Higgins is showing his heart to build an empire. This week, Kyle Higgins and Marcelo Costa dropped their creator-owned series, Radiant Black. And if those names sound familiar to you on this channel, well, it's because they should. We've talked about Kyle on this channel before, most recently for co-writing Marvel's The Rise of Ultraman with Matt Groom. And of course, for his run on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which turned out to be steroids for the franchise itself. Speaking of Power Rangers, artist Marcelo Costa might be familiar to some of you for his work on the same series. Marcelo was the colorist for the landmark event Shattered Grid, as well as the first original graphic novel, Soul of the Dragon. While in this book, Costa moves to the artist role and makes it known that he is right at home. But before we talk about art, let me dial it back and tell you what this series is about. Meet Nathan Burnett, a 30 year old writer who's having a hard time doing just that. Such a hard time in fact that he's forced to move back in with his parents after being buried in debt. No seriously, like five figures in debt. And taking him from big city Los Angeles to the 2500 resident town of Lockport, Illinois is obviously weighing on him a bit much. Well, and and the credit card debt, that probably weighs heavy too. When Nathan's first night back with an old friend becomes a little more than he bargained for, a fateful meeting with a mysterious little black hole gives him awesome powers and a suit to boot. That's your premise, and I'm here to assure you that this isn't your run-of-the-mill superhero book. Let's start spoiler free and I'll warn you when we get a little deeper. Kyle Higgins has said that Nathan is sort of a Spider-Man for millennials. And after reading the first few pages, you can absolutely see why. But it isn't until the end of the book that those comparisons stop being just skin deep. Anyone can write hero down on their luck, but what makes Nathan relatable is Kyle's background. Everything from being a writer to sharing a hometown, you can tell that Higgins is writing from experience. And the feelings that Nathan is going through is something that's relatable to everyone, especially after the last year. And as regulars of the channel know, I'm a huge fan of tokusatsu. I mean, come on, it's literally the first word of the intro. Kyle has talked about the toku influences of this book, and I can't bring them up without talking about what Marcelo Costa delivers and my God, does he deliver. The suit just looks more brilliant every time you flip the page. I won't put it in the video because it needs to be experienced, but the transformation sequence is beautiful. The layout design is so kinetic that it feels like it would be at home in any Japanese tokusatsu. The characters that aren't in suit look great too. Costa conveys a tense situation with spot on facial expressions. It's disheartening to open a book and the hero is the only person who had work put in. That's not this book. In fact, all the named characters are completely distinct in their own ways. Even the backgrounds look great. To really praise the book, I need to talk about a specific panel and I can't do that without spoiling it. So if you haven't read the book yet, skip to this time code in the video. For the rest of you, that was your warning because we're going full spoilers. I wanna talk about this panel. Nathan is just realizing what happened to him. He's got these powers now and is quick to feel a higher calling, but there's, there's no happiness here. Nathan screwed up his life so far. There's something I've always worried about, and as I myself come up on 30, I see it here on this page just staring me in the face. People have always told me I'm full of potential, but when does that potential become wasted? When does, hey, you're so good at that, become, well, you could have done better. Nathan feels that way about his writing, and it's not completely unwarranted. In fact, the way he talks about this new adventure isn't as a gift as much as it is a crutch. Something that Nathan is going to latch onto whether he's good at it or not. Because at this point, it's all he has. And I think that that's a really interesting place for a hero to start. He's literally a beacon of shining light in the dark. But the heart behind that symbol is so burnt out that it's gonna be hard to shine just as bright. The last page gives us the hook going forward and it is straight out of a tokusatsu show. While Higgins has talked about how the idea for this series came from his time on Power Rangers, I think there's a lot more to that statement than he's letting on. He's compared Nathan to the likes of a Kamen Rider or a metal hero, but deep down the line, I think Higgins is building an ensemble cast. Think of it like if all the Power Rangers got their powers separately and had different goals, but, this is issue one and this is just my theory and I could be completely wrong. Kyle, if you're watching, DM me, let me know. I said at the beginning of this video that Higgins was showing his heart to build an empire. And that brings us to his letter to the readers at the end. 
Kyle chronicles his love and struggle with Power Rangers growing up, and it's really something everyone on this channel can relate to. He then talks about writing the Power Rangers comic, and one passage specifically stuck out to me. Quote, I didn't write the property as I remember it existing. I wrote the property as I remembered it making me feel. I think that Tenet was so important in reinvigorating the franchise the way that he did. And that's what makes me excited for Kyle being in charge of a whole universe of his own. Did I say universe? I did. Announced at the end of the column is Kyle Higgins' multimedia company, Black Market Narrative. It's a production house for everything from feature films to podcasts to other creator-owned books, the first of which being announced right there. Remember Kyle's Ultraman co-writer, Matt Groom, that I mentioned earlier? Well, he and Erica D'Urso will be bringing us the first announced book in Dragon Girl Red. And if you think Radiant Black gave you tokusatsu vibes, just look at this teaser picture. I absolutely need a statue of this right now, so black market narrative, toys, make it happen. When Groom was asked on Twitter if this would be in the same universe as Radiant Black, he quote tweeted, What a wild conclusion to jump to. Why ever would you think such a thing? Move along, nothing to see here. Dragon Girl Red will be launching a Kickstarter in March and you can get more info on it and future projects at radiant.black slash newsletter. With all that said, Radiant Black is a great book. They delivered and I'm so on board with wherever this goes. But I expected a great book from Higgins and Costa. What I didn't expect was for Kyle Higgins to throw all his chips on the table and start what might be the next comics empire. Something modern and for this generation, the same way Image Comics was for the 90s. I think that that's the big story here and I can't wait to watch it unfold over the next few years. Side note, there are podcasts that accompany Kyle's past work like Ranger Danger Boom Room and Dead Drop that absolutely opened my mind to comics so I hope they continue it with this endeavor. But as always, I wanna know your thoughts on Radiant Black and the Black Market Narrative announcement Leave them in the comments section down below, or if you want to talk to me about them live, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. Plus, I want to be your friend. Come find me on any social media. They are all right there on the screen. Don't forget to hench that like button into a blue boy and right or kick that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I am super, super Sentai grateful, and I will see you next time.